let's continue to just move through this tutorial and look at the types of things we can do with beautiful soup. So we have that soup object that we prettified that had all that thing, all those things in it. Um, these different children, um, the way it's organized. And let's do a list uh, soup.children and have it kind of print this out and we'll take a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to get back in here. And instead of printing that, we might have to print this. We're going to find out. I'm going to have to copy that. And I'm going to come back over here. And we're just going to list soup.children. Save it. I'm going to background it. I'm going to python scraper.py. Didn't do anything. So that list statement isn't helping us right now in this environment. So we're going to have to encapsulate that in a print statement. So I'm going to print list soup.children. And here we go. And so essentially we get this output here. Let's analyze this output. Now, when we're working with a real web page, this can get kind of hairy because they're kind of long and this is short, so it's easy to parse through. But this is a comma separated list. So we have a comma there that's not surrounded by quotation marks or anything. And we have an HTML. This is a doc type tag. We have a slash n, so that's a new line character. Somebody hit enter there. And then we have an HTML tag that contains all these other tags. You'll notice there's no comma between HTML and head. So the head tag is technically a child of the HTML tag. Um, and it looks like the title is also a child of the head tag. But when we look at um, listing the children of soup directly, this HTML tag is the direct sort of child item. And uh, in an array format, this would be array item 0, this would be array item 1, this would be array item 2. Now, uh, you could put this line in uh, and test it if you wanted to, and it would work. And we're going to say for type. This is a for loop. We'll be using those for sure. Um, type item for item in list. And if you're not familiar with Python for loops at this point, you need to do a little bit of uh, research or ask me. And we'll get into for loops because you need to be able to loop through things in Python. But we're saying for item in this list here, um, which is soup.children. So for everything that we have there, what are the types essentially? And we can see the first one is a doc type tag. The second one is a navigable string. That would be our slash n. And the other one is a beautiful soup element tag. And that's an HTML tag. And anytime you see a tag, then you can start to access the different sort of aspects and characteristics within that tag. So let's work with the HTML, that tag. Let's grab that piece, and I'm going to copy this line right here, HTML equals list soup.children. And uh, in brackets here, we have two because we're going to grab the second array element. So copy that. We'll look at it. And uh, you can see here, this is our zero array element. This is our first array element, and we're going to grab the second array element now in our code. So I'm going to hit FG, and uh, we may surround this by... A print statement as well. So I'm going to copy that. And so I grab that second array element and I'll just do a print um, HTML here. And we'll take a look at what that looks like in two different contexts. So make it look like this. Save, background that. And I'm going to Python again, scraper.py. It looks like this. So we've got that HTML element and we're, we don't have the doc type or that new line at the beginning. It just starts at HTML. I could also redirect this. I could do Python scraper.py use the greater than sign and call this, you know, file.txt. You'll notice it doesn't print anything, but now I have a file that contains that same thing. And that can be helpful when we're outputting large amounts of data. I'm going to control X to exit that. Uh, instead of outputting to the command line, which scrolls all the way down on PuTTY, if you drop it into a file like that, you can sort of open up the file and look, look at what you're trying to work with. That can be helpful later on as well. So let's continue to uh, work through the tutorial. So we can get uh, a list of the HTML children here. And the first thing we'll probably see again is our head tag. 
So uh, now that we've pulled our HTML, I'm going to copy that. Drop back in here. And so we've got the HTML. I'll cut that print statement. We've gone into the beautiful soup object that contains the whole page. We said grab the second array element, which is that HTML tag. And now we're going to uh, list HTML children. And I'll go ahead and I'll put like a HTML. I'll create a variable here, HTML children equals list HTML children. And I can print that, I'm sort of doing this on the fly. And let's take a look at what we get when we do this. Save it. I'll just Python scraper dot py. And you can see here that when we print the children of the HTML tag, it now starts with the head tag. And inside of that, we have a title tag, right? Uh, which closes off our head tag here. So here's one child element that has a child inside of it. We have another navigable string here. We could get the types of each one of these. We have a body tag that goes on for a while, and that body tag contains a tag, P, that's a child of body. So hopefully you can kind of see how that, those relationships and how that kind of works. So if we want to move forward and we want to access this body tag and start to extract data from that, we have to ask ourselves, this is an array, what element is it? So this is array element zero. This is array element one. This is array element two. And the body is array element three. So we could do this by hand at this point, or we could just grab this. So I'm going to copy this, and there's our array element three. And so now we've got our body tag right now. And I could do uh, body, I'll put children equals. We can do the same thing, list body dot children and we can kind of see what's inside of there and I'd have to print again body children to see it in this context so stop and make it look like that pretty sure that's right we're gonna find out oh yeah that, that should be good so get all of them okay and you can see that uh, inside of the body, we have array element zero is a new line. Array element one is this P tag. And then array element two, again, is a string. So we just have this one item inside of our body at array position one that is a P tag. And there's nothing special in there. There's no links. It's just some text. Now, because I know it's a P tag, in this case, we just call it P. That could be anything at all. Call it tag, call it whatever. Um, and we could access that array element one here and we could do a p.get text and it would print the text in that tag. Let's just do that real quick. Let's grab that first element in the array and then do a get underscore text on it. So here it comes. So I'll get rid of this. I called mine, um, We'll get rid of this line here too. So make your program look like this. We know there's a P tag at array element one, right? So we're going to do a list body dot children after getting to the body. Uh, and then we can go um, text. Uh, I'll call it, call it anything you want, really. P underscore text equals uh, P dot get text. I believe it looks like that, right? So that first element is a P tag. I'm going to create a variable here. We're going to do a text extraction and I'll print P text just like that. So make your program look like that. Let's see if it works. I hope so. We'll find out. And when we run it, you can see here is some simple content for this page. We are able to extract that element within the page. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to have you throw a signature on there so I can see it in your screenshot. So I'm going to do a print, and then in quotation marks, uh, Josh Beck, put your name in there, okay? And uh, grab the snipping tool, snip this program right here, 
and uh, just show me that you've got this in. You can turn it in for credit. That'll be Python uh, checkpoint two. Uh, under beautiful soup, you'll see the checkpoint two screenshot of what we have at the end of this video, and then it's time to move on.